Support for this episode of Tape Don't Lie is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawn Mower 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who have trusted Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code TDL at Manscaped.com. That's TDL at manscaped.com. Everybody, we are back. It is tape. Don't lie. It is your preview episode. You know, this comes to you every single Friday. So, like I said, if you're seeing this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, 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 right? If you are hearing this on, you know, silverandblackpride.com, you know, on iTunes or on Spotify or Stitcher, wherever you can listen to podcasts, go ahead and leave a review, download, do whatever you got to do. Go ahead and support uh, Tape Don't Lie. So, uh, you know, subscribe, leave a review, download, whatever you got to do over there, you know, just go ahead and support us. You know, we're giving you guys this content, right? And then make sure you follow us on Twitter at BD Williams 18 for a BD at the Mark John NFL for me. And then, you know, go ahead and copy your shirt. You'll see some people copy some shirts, you know, uh, I think BD sporting it today. He's sporting the shirt. Hey, check it hey, out. You guys. Know, take, don't lie. You know what I'm saying? Don't sporting lie. It, you know what I mean? So, hey, so uh, it's, check us. Yeah. It's a really comfortable shirt. Honestly, okay. all right, nice. You know, people aren't uh, when I, in my younger days, I didn't care if a shirt was comfortable or not, but yeah. now that you know I'm over 30 years old, that's something that I do care about if a shirt is comfortable, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's comfortable, logo looks good. You know, you wear this out, okay, you automatically get cred automatically. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why, okay, I don't make the rules. I'm just saying, tape don't lie, you start repping tape don't lie, you know. People are going to look at you a little different than they did yeah. before. So, uh, but for real, uh, big shout out, man. So many people have been hitting us up on Twitter, yeah. showing the uh, showing the shirts. Uh, so someone just posted a picture of them wearing um, a hoodie. You know, uh, we so we started retweeting it last night. We got a bunch of sales uh, on the Tape Don't Lie uh, website. We'll put we'll drop the link in the description below. Um, and if you're listening to listening to this on Spotify or or uh, iTunes, mm. just find us on Twitter. You'll see some of uh, the stuff that we retweeted. You know, some of the fans they they're posting. V- we're very thankful to them. They're posting yeah, the, sure. the link, so you know you can you can find the tape. Don't like gear on uh, those places. Uh, so yeah, so very thankful to like uh, we had like uh, an extra like ten people buy last night. Really cool. Oh wow. Yeah. Stop. Uh, so All yeah, right, so least... usually. Again, you know, this preview show, we we would, Marcus would look at the other team's offense. I would look at the other team's defense. We would have a conversation about it. We would say these might be some things that we can, the Raiders can exploit. Yeah. We could see the Raiders exploiting, and this might be some things that the Raiders ha- might have trouble with on either mm-hmm. side of the ball. But I am not breaking down San Francisco 49ers third string uh, players when they're not hey, Lance, playing their scheme out there. Trey look, Lance, look, you can watch Trey Lance because I know you're you're a quarterback <laughs> guru, savants, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> but but me, but me, um, I, I I do not care to watch um, preseason scheme. I'll just watch for some players here and there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're not breaking down the opponent per se, but we will talk about what some things that we expect to see. And so I'll start this. I'll start you off, Marcus. Sounds like. Greg Olson's comments today during his press conference, he didn't want uh, the Raiders to risk injury to, you know, some of their key players. So it sounds like, once again, you were right. They -hmm. will not be trotting out Derek Carr and the starting offense against the 49ers. So what are we looking at here? Is there a reason to tune in this weekend? Uh, I mean, uh, the wide receiver battle, uh, you know, Greg Olson did mention that there's going to be a wide kind of – there's a um, a chance for some wide receiver to make the team and kind of show out, you know, it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I really feel like practice is more important than the preseason. The, the way you perform in practice is looked at a lot 
heavily, you know, that, that's how, you, you know, a guy like Chris Warren, we, we get all excited, you know, watch Chris Warren, he's doing all these moves and he's, you know, dominating in the preseason, then he doesn't make the team, right? Because maybe something he's doing in practice or he's not picking up something. So I think practice means a little bit more. So when they say stuff like that, yeah, the, this game, they're going to see what this guy looks like, you know, Dylan Stoner might go out there and catch 10 balls for 180 yards and not make the team. So like, it's, it's interesting how that works, but that's what they're talking about. They're talking about getting uh, the wide receivers going. That's kind of a thing to watch. I think it's interesting because I, I think that, I think they got the six set. I, um, you know, if you, if you pick somebody, are you to pick them over a Sneed or are you to pick them over Zay Jones? Cause I think Sneed looks really slow on tape right now I think he looks he does not look explosive at all so if somebody was to move on from it would be him because his explosion and his route running does not it just he he looks he looks old a little bit so he's I mean here's here's my question here's my question go ahead have they kept seven wide receivers before no always six always six okay and could could it be that one of these guys that they're looking at like say Dylan Stoner they're talking about maybe their ability as a returner to be you know part of that part of the mix there um if they were to do that I would say they go, they go with uh DJ Turner because I think DJ Turner actually as a receiver out of the second group of guys I mean it'd probably be like Keelan Doss but Keelan Doss kind of lost his opportunity in the last game I mean you know, I'm bringing up games after I said that doesn't matter but the last game, I mean, he had some 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 bad drops that you know led to interceptions. And yeah, he's he's a good route runner, but he's just he doesn't have that ability to kind of just catch the football whenever he wants to. So he's kind of a liability with his hands. That's Keelan Dawson's problem. Keelan Dawson's problem is not his problem that that he can get open. Is that it can he catch consistently? And then since he's an undrafted guy that can't catch consistently, nobody really wants to deal with that. So that's his kind of his issue. But if they were to keep somebody. I think they should keep DJ Turner. I thought DJ Turner, um, when he has been called to run a route and he's been the number one guy, he's actually ran some good routes. He had a, a good play last game on the four verts. They ran a, the stick knot four verts that they ran the first uh, the first game that went to Zay Jones. But this time, Nathan Peterman went to DJ Turner and he ran a good route, right? And got open, made a good catch because it wasn't the most accurate ball. And he made a good catch. If they're going to keep somebody... I would say keep him because he adds returner value, right? And then he even, he does, he, yes. He has a little bit of upside as a receiver. Like he even ran a good choice route in the first week. He, they had him run a choice route at the three by three by one. They had run for around all the time, you know. That I talk about, you know, talk about the choice looky route. They had him run that. He ran it perfectly. He did have a play earlier in the game where he messed up a route. But in my opinion, if they are looking for a receiver that to uh, you know do kick returns. Jalen Richard's hurt. I would go with DJ Turner because I think he has been the most impressive on tape. Dylan Stoner. There are some opportunities where he could he, he won deep and uh, they weren't able to get him the football. But the alligator arm thing bothered me. I, I couldn't get over him having alligator arms on the slant flat. Like bro, like this is your this is your opportunity <laughs> to make the team and you he like jumped he like jumped and did like this thing like this it was like I don't, I don't know what he was doing but he like it's a slam bro just catch it it was, it was accurate it wasn't a bad pass I mean it was late I, I give it to him he's about to get killed but he didn't have to like jump and like spread your legs this is your <laughs> chance <laughs> you know get like, popped bro, come on. it's okay get popped come on bro yeah, yeah. get pop. make the team you know saying they think you're tough you know what I mean if you you know Gruden loves tough guys but that's what I'm saying like you know, they're try- still trying to hype up uh, Dylan Stoner a little bit. I saw Vic uh, Tafer, you know, because that's his that's his uh, guy. They were trying to hype him up a little bit about he still has a chance to make the team, but I I just don't see it from like a tape's perspective. If, if they're going with one guy, I think they should go with DJ Turner, in my opinion. So yes, he's someone that kind of you know I shouldn't say popped out, but I ca- he caught my eye a little bit in the first game, mm-hmm. um, but. You know, unfortunately, we don't have access to the special teams all 22. Yeah. But from the broadcast, I thought Dylan Stoner had at least one impressive punt return. Do you remember that? Uh, no, I did not remember that. If that was last week, I was in Vegas. So who knows uh, how okay. intoxicated I was at that point in time. 
<laughs> um, all right, we'll table that. We'll table that discussion. We got. We got to review. Maybe it. I did watch it. I don't know. I probably did. Who knows? I did watch um, the game. So yeah, yeah. You had to watch. Yeah, you had to, look. It, watching the broadcast. Okay. Watching the all twenty two. Yeah. That's thank you. I want. That's what I want. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's. Um, is there any other topics on offense? We talked about wide receivers. Yeah, yeah the quarterbacks aren't playing, right? Quarterbacks um, aren't playing between yeah. Regis because uh, you you texted me something and we didn't get to talk about it. Okay, yeah. so I'm about to put you on the spot right now. Okay, you texted me something, and so let me ask you: Regis or Emmons? All right, so this is where it gets tough for me because Regis is the pass blocker. And he can catch the football, right? But I, BJ Emmons is the better runner. I think BJ Emmons has some really, really <laughs> he has some special runs. Like I, I showed it on um, <clears throat> on Twitter about him setting up linebackers in the second level, and that wasn't the, the only time he did that. In the game. there's another part where he set up a tackle, like a defense tackle. But it's just it's just stuff you don't see. So I'll explain. Basically, he goes up to the line, right, and before he hits the hole, you know, you know, the, the they're engaged, right? And he just the defensive tackle is deciding which way to shed. So what BJ Emmons does is he goes like this. So what, what does that guy do? Goes like this, right? And then what does Emmons do? He goes the opposite, gets five yards. Like, bro, that's not normal. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is not normal. You just that is you don't you don't teach that like a running back coach is not going to teach you to do that i mean they might they might you know tell you about you know moving linebacker second level but if you're a you know a rookie guy coming in the league and you got that type of patience and you understand how to run the football like that that's not something that you just can teach but i don't think he's going to make the team over Regis. If, if 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 a running back made the team it would be him because Regis is the pass blocker and he doesn't have to be a a bell cow back. I think Emmons is a type of guy where like some team stashes him and the guy they get hurt and then he gets a chance and then he yeah. knows what he does with it. That's what type of guy he is. But when you watch him, you could tell he was a four star recruit, bro. Like, you know, Regis is not a four star recruit. BJ Emmons is a four star recruit to Alabama. You can tell with his movement skills and the way he moves. Like his three cone and his uh 20 yard shuttle are on like the 80 percentile. So the way he, he moves is pretty special um but he has a lot of talent so i mean if i was the coach i mean i would keep it but i the, the pass blocking is important so i know trey reagan's yeah. gonna, gonna make that team over him the sure. the all, all and this is what it comes down to when we're talking about um you know the point of these games and like some final roster spots like whoever's making the roster now is not gonna be it's not gonna make it for their ability yeah really on like you know, between the twenties or to be a big part of the offense, like it'll be very small niche parts of the offense that yeah. they're making it for. So in the case of like Regis versus Emmons, Emmons is a great runner. You're saying, okay, but the Raiders already got a great runner. Yeah. And then they also got Kenyon Drake who like they're paying to be a big part of the offense. Like how many snaps would Emmons get? Right. Exactly. And then for Regis, it would be like, okay, if one of these guys goes down and they still need to, you know, spell that guy and they want to get into a two minute drill or something like that, Regis would be able to handle that, even though he's not as good of a runner necessarily. Okay? Exactly. A according to what you're telling me. So like, even though Regis has like, uh, maybe not as, talented his mm -hmm. niche value yeah is, that's how you make the team right yeah. like so we're talking about dj turner his niche value as you know adding upside as a kick returner that's mm -hmm. how he makes the team it's not about you know him being a starter eventually like that's not what they're projecting when they when these these small little details fall into place at the end at the end you know so that's what that's what we're looking for for sure um so yeah. I'm, I'm glad to, i'm glad that you said that um i'd be inter i'll be interested for sure to see what they ended up end up doing um in the past they keep three tailbacks and a fullback or have they ever kept four fullbacks or four four tailbacks and a fullback no, okay yeah so it's between regus richard and emmons yeah but i still think they go richard everybody thinks richard's dead but i don't know about that 
not if he's not if he can play. I mean, he might like start off hurt, and then maybe that guy makes somebody makes team. But I don't think Jalen Richard is gonna just go away. Like I think people think he's gonna get replaced. I don't know about that. It'll be it'll be uh, the apocalypse. Jalen Richard will still be on the Raiders. Okay, the guy has made it through everything. Every every. Regime change, okay. Yeah, you can't get rid of that guy too easy. Yeah, that's a good point. Hey, TDO fans, after a bunch of requests, we finally dropped our tape don't lie store with sizes from extra small to 4x. Get one for every member of the family. Show your friends you're a football tape junkie like us and rep your favorite film channel. Link is in the description below. Okay, um, so let's uh let's switch over here to talk about the defense real quick. Yeah. Um, first things first, Denzel Perriman. Yeah, Ra- Raiders has some hiccups at linebacker, according to Gruden's press conference. He didn't give exact diagnosis for Javin White's injury or Nicholas Morrow's injury, but he did say that they're going to be out for a while, right? So, middle linebacker, starting middle linebacker out, backup weak side linebacker out. So, the Raiders now scrambling, okay. They're hoping Devon Diablo steps in as that backup weak side linebacker. And now they are signing another inside linebacker, middle linebacker, Denzel Perryman. Um, And so Bradley kept on talking about depth. He kept like during his press conference today, Bradley kept on saying depth. This is depth. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I go back and I I, I knew who Denzel Perryman was because I watched a whole bunch of um, Chargers tape last four uh, for the last um, this offseason, I watched the four years of Char- Chargers defense, and he's always been a situational player for them, okay. right? Um, you know, like, they they had him in as a starter when, when certain players went down, but, like, he was never, like, the opening day. Like, he, he was not in their plans to be, like, the starting middle linebacker. You know, he would only start if players got hurt or something like that. You know, and last okay. year with Kenneth Murray – being the starting uh, middle linebacker, Denzel Perriman really only saw the field in base defense um, for like the first 10, 11 weeks of 2020 before he started seeing a little bit more time in the nickel package because there was an, another injury, right? So okay. he's just, he's a depth guy. Like that's what his role is. And he, he took that on really well last year in the Chargers. So when they're trying to talk to KJ Wright and they're they're saying, hey, we want to create depth and we want to create competition. And KJ Wright's like, no, I'm a starter, right? Whereas Denzel Perryman, he's like, yes, I signed me. I'm cool with my role. That, that's perfectly fine with me, right? Like he's yeah. already he's already done that. Um, so yeah, it is going to be depth. I would anticipate Nick Kukowski, as long as he's uh, healthy, being the starting middle, middle linebacker. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think Nick Wachowski is probably more effective in, co- in coverage than Denzel Perryman is so far, yeah. just for off of, um, I've only watched, um, six games, like focusing in on Denzel Perryman from 2020 and two games from 2019 that he started. And I have yet to see him make an impact against the past, like in coverage, um, at all those games. But what he does really well is he shoots gaps. Um, and he's got great acceleration to the ball carrier like a lot of burst um i think coming forward you know he's got he's gonna just hus- out hustle you outwork you um and some of the fits that he was making you know like he's got guards pulling and he just meets the running back right in the hole like like he's playing running back you know like he's reading the blocking scheme and he just knows exactly where the ball carrier is headed you know that kind of stuff comes with just being a veteran and tape study you know like to do those things so you know i don't think that he's i don't think that he's bad he's definitely really good against the run uh but he's just like out there against the pass so hopefully nick wikowski can be the starter and be healthy as long as nicholas morrow is out but perryman you know he 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 could be a factor against heavy run teams for sure yeah what was i thought was interesting about the press conference that said that um morrow is going to be out longer than white People thought White's injury is going to be more serious. So, yeah, I think that people jumped to that conclusion with Jevin White because they saw him be carted off the field A and B. Like they were saying, like he was like head in his hands, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. And his reaction made it made people think, oh, he must know that something is like really badly messed up in his knee. So he must be out. Mm-hmm. Right. 
But um, I, I noticed that someone fell on him early on in the game. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of played through it for like a quarter, but he had like a visible limp for the rest of the game. And then on the, on the play where he gets uh, injured mm-hmm. and, they, and they cart him off, um, one of the, the, one of the, one of his teammates falls, like gets pushed behind uh, on the ground behind him and he's getting blocked. And so he's trying to anchor, but then he gets tripped up on his teammate, but his feet, like usually when you see like a bad knee injury, mm-hmm. someone rolls up for you on you from behind and your feet get stuck in the ground when you go yeah. over and something like pops in your knee because of mm-hmm. that. Right. In this case, Jevin White's feet shot right out from underneath him. Right. Yeah. But then yeah. he still was holding his knee. So I do think that there is a, there is a chance that it's not like a huge issue. It could be like, um, you know, like an MCL. A sprain, probably. Or, or, or something like that, you know, yeah. that you can come back during, you know, during the season. You know, you're not going to be, you're not going to feel great <laughs> coming back with an yeah. MCL, you know, but it, it is possible to come back uh, depending on how badly it's torn. Mm. Uh, you know, and and you could have you could have a, a partial tear of an MCL, you know, and and the doctors are like, yeah, all you need to do is just rest, and it's going to heal, and you can be back in you know a month or a month and a half or something like that. So hope, hopefully for him and for his case that that that's what happened. Um, and but we'll see, we'll get a real hard look at Devon Diablo. This uh, sounds like you know this yeah. weekend, mm-hmm. and we'll see if Devon Diablo is making some plays, kind of similar to what Javon White is. Then you know. Uh, it's a moot point. Yeah. But we will see. We will see because Jevin White kind of, especially the last game, he set the bar pretty high, honestly. Uh, some of the plays that he was making were a little um, they're a little uncommon, I would say, for um, coverage linebackers to be making. So he did, he did a pretty good job. Divine Diablo is going to have to ball out. Yeah. I mean, I think Diablo's better at coverage. Um, I mean, yeah, he's, he's better at coverage than he is really at like tackling which is crazy. Um, he wasn't always, uh, when I watched him, he missed a lot of tackles. Um, so he, he, I mean, he's a hard hitter. Like he'll hit you like, you know, but like open field and he has to like, you know, break down and make a tackle. He was getting, there was, there was some issues on tape with him there, but I like in coverage. I thought he was super clean in coverage. I thought he had great movement, great movement skills. Uh, especially how for how big he was as a safety, uh, you know, even the breakdown I did um, earlier. If you guys go back on YouTube, I talked about some of the, his coverage skills, and yeah, I mean, he he moves like a safety. So I think he's going to be a, a good in coverage. It's more about him coming up and playing the run with him. Like I, I really don't have a problem with him in coverage. It's like the difference of Tanner Muse. Him and Tanner Muse are like the complete opposite. Like Tanner Muse is, you know, plays the run pretty well right i mean i've seen some clips that you put out there he's he looks like he's a lot better you know learning the run fits and he he's comfortable there because he did he, that's what he did well at clemson the divine the divine diablo is the opposite he is good in coverage so he makes a lot of coverage plays like he has this play with trevor lawrence when he picked off trevor lawrence and he baited him and he was, like came from the all the way from the other side as a safety and picked him off so he has a lot of instincts like that in coverage it's just playing the run. That's why when you talk about his interview, you know, he wasn't too excited about, you know, coming up and <laughs> setting the edge or trying to take on linebackers because that's not what he used to do. He, he, if you get him in the, on third down, though, I think he could cover tight ends. I think he, could, he, he has that ability. So, And I, I definitely I, – I agree with you 100%. I think yeah. that the question is how quickly is he going to, like, meet like the talent going to like show up on the field for him yeah you know like that's my question because he's changing positions mm-hmm. you know like javin white at least had like a full season nfl season where he's like fringe roster getting cut getting signed but he's on the practice squad he's playing linebacker for a full season in the nfl mm-hmm. uh, full off season and yeah. then you know comes in and it looks and he's like a different player you know, whereas Devon Diablo, like he's just now, and he was hurt a lot. And he like, he's one of the last guys to sign. He was hurt a lot. Now he's mm-hmm. coming in. Like, has he really, how many reps has he had to like be comfortable doing it? You know, there yeah. things move a little quicker. You, 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 you can't be baiting as a linebacker. You know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get there immediately, you know, yeah. like, um, and so, and, and not only that, but it's the NFL, so it's going to be faster, mm-hmm. you know? So 
we'll see i i 100 agree with you like he has talent for sure like some of the things that you were showing me i'm like wow that's shocking that a player of his size and stature is like making plays like this in coverage mm-hmm. you know yeah because usually you see a, a big safety like um auburn had one burrell i think his name was um or even humson astral dean these guys are like really big safeties yeah and you know you watch them and they're like okay yeah they're good like like they're big hitters so they could have been thrown or something like that but they're just like they don't have the gear to play safety in the nfl whereas yeah. like divine diablo like maybe you know 10 years ago like he's definitely playing safety in the nfl you know uh-huh. uh uh so yeah so yes yeah, so, so i i agree he's got the talent i just don't know if it's going to be like missing all this time missing all this camp is he going to be able to just hit the ground running you know Nate Hobbs proved me wrong, so maybe Devon Diablo can too. We'll see. Yeah, 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 yeah man. You, you're, the, you're the big Nate Hobbs hater, so. <laughs> like I, I, I told everyone I'm very happy, and I, and I never said that he was not going to be a good player. I was just like, how quickly is this going to work out for him? You know, but looks like it's uh, coming on pretty quick. So it's all right. Wait, wait till Andre James comes in. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be people trying to retweet my tweet. Yeah, they couldn't play. Yeah, they're gonna be. Yeah, they're gonna be ready. They're gonna come. They're gonna, they're gonna, gonna come at me. Yeah, ready to come yeah. after me, bro. I'm be right, um, man. yeah. So I think that that's it's probably it on defense. You know, um, I expect to see Tyre Gillespie as at strong safety a lot. Um, I expect to see you know a little bit more competition. We're gonna find out who's you know the final corner on the roster. Keisha Nixon, Amik Robertson um to, like these guys are playing on the outside i think bleedy ray wilson will also get in there so we'll mm-hmm. see between those three guys you know who runs out the cornerback position on the outside nate hobbs seems to have it locked in obviously yeah. um they got some they, they have like two weeks i think of excuse me leeway with nevin lawson because he's suspended yeah you know but um uh Nahab's is gonna Wally Pip him. He's he's gonna take that starting spot week one and never look back. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if honestly, I don't think that Nevin Lawson should make this roster. So I think that it should be, you know, guys like Keisha Nixon and Meek Robertson that have, you know, some a little bit more upside because like they know what Nevin Lawson is. Like he's an average defender in the yeah. NFL, you know, like. He's not going to be an impact player for you. He's a guy who can run. You know, he's a veteran, but he's not, like, ever going to, like, be a game changer. You know, like, the boat has sailed on his career. We know what Nevin Lawson is. Yeah. So, ho- hopefully, like, if we're talking about a reserve player, you know, a guy who's not going to get major minutes, they'll just go with some younger guys that they can bring along and see what they got. So, uh, I'm hoping that Nevin Lawson doesn't actually make the team and that some younger guys do, even though – I'm probably the biggest Nevin Lawson fan out there, but I'm just calling yeah. it like it is right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then another thing, okay. Um, I, I, sh- I probably shouldn't start this conversation. So a lot of people are upset, and I just want to – just more Raider Nation should listen to us, okay. A lot of people seem to be really upset that Cleveland Farrell is with the second team. And they keep on tweeting st- stuff like, um, what a waste of a pick. And, you know, oh, a, a rotational player, top four, uh, you know, pick or something like stuff like that. OK, now I just don't know. Like, there's so many things to, to unpack here. First of all, um, in the draft process, correct me if I'm wrong, in the draft process, the entire year after Nick Bosa, Cleveland Furl was the next like top, top rated defensive event the entire season. Like during the season? During the season. Yes. Oh, for sure. It was that like it was Nick Bosa, Cleveland Furl. He was a top five pick, but like, you know, when people do like the way too early mock drafts, they had him going yes. top five. So, so from like the summer before the season and then all the way during the season, okay, Cleveland Furl was a top five pick. Then Josh Allen started doing some crazy things at Kentucky and like late, late in the process, like in December and on, he started getting himself in the, in the mix there. Okay. And then Brian Burns, because the combine after football was done, like no one's playing football anymore, but Brian Burns had a freaky combine. 
Okay. And yeah. so everyone kind of went back and watched the tape and they were like, okay, yeah, this guy has a lot of potential here. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but like Clinton for all, for almost like almost six, seven months was a top five pick. And it was only, you know, some freaky performances from Josh Allen and then like a freaky combine from Brian Burns where yeah. he started like falling in the draft, Nick, you know, polls and media, yeah. you know, people who cover the draft. Okay. But like, like he was always a top five pick, you know, like he was at least top 10 pick, you know, he comes from a big school. He's a national championship he, mm. champion. He's, he's big, he's strong and all that stuff. Okay. And obviously it hasn't panned out. And then the other thing is Gus Bradley did not draft him. He, he Gus Bradley doesn't draft to run stopping defensive ends. Okay. Like Paul Gunther made that a priority. Paul Gunther has gone now. So yeah, Clint Farrell is going to be a rotational piece. He's not a scheme fit and nickel. You know, like he's a scheme fit in base. They're in base five times a game. You know, like he's going to be a rotational player now. Like that's what his scheme fit is. So I I just, if people are getting so upset about Clinton Furrow, but like there's a lot of stuff here that uh, just doesn't, it doesn't scan when we're, if we're like really taking a hard look at it. Yeah, I mean, that's the draft pick that everybody wanted to hit on, really, because it was top five. And everybody's upset that, you know, they didn't really hit on it. You know what I mean? They, they didn't Don't like be it. upset at Clinton Farrell. Be upset at Paul Gunther that that John that's Gruden what, that's what I said. hired Paul Gunther and kept him for as long and said, yes, you you tell Mike Mayock what you want. OK, like be upset at that. OK, that's what you should be upset. <laughs> that's, at. What I, that's what I said, because, you know, it, it's it's a it was a scheme fit pick, which. Right. I mean, that goes back to what I always say with the draft, though, is you don't draft for scheme. You draft for you draft talent. <laughs> you think you adjust the scheme around the talent. That's, you know, uh, but, you know, my thing with the Pharaoh thing is, you know, I mean, I wanted Ed Oliver. Right. I was big at Oliver guy. I actually had him ranked number one. He's my number one guy that year at Oliver. I was number one. He has not been good at all. He hasn't been good. I mean, Josh Allen had a, had a, a really good year the year before Then Yannick leaves. And then he, you know, he has an inch, some injuries and he goes down to two sacks. Right. And you know, the Yannick leaves, all those other, I think Malik Jackson, you know, all those guys that are around him, they left and, you know, he didn't play as well. So unless it was Brian Burns, which the whole NFL, he didn't go to 16. So the whole NFL messed up Brian Burns. Because I think he's the one that probably has a chance to be actual half, superstar. Half the NFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but yeah. Half the NFL. Right, it, right. Enough for the NFL. <laughs> right. <laughs> say, you know, because the Bills, they're looking for a pass rusher. They could have taken Brian Burns. You know, they, they had to draft pass rushers this year to replace um, the pass rushers they drafted the past couple years. And they just could have drafted Brian Burns. It would have been perfectly fine, right? But, uh, um, you know, do you think that Packers fans, so. do you think that Packers fans are upset about, uh, as upset about Rashawn Gary? As Raiders fans are upset about Clinton Furl. Because Rashawn no, Gary get... is a what what was he like top? He, he went 12. So 12th, 12th overall, same draft. Mm-hmm. They could have had Brian Burns, <laughs> right? Uh they went with Rashawn Gary, and he's yeah. a situational player for the Packers. Like he's not a starter. It's yeah. Preston Smith and Zadaria Smith who are the starting edge edge players, right? Yeah. So do you think that that they are also like Packers fans? Have you heard Packers fans be upset about Rashawn Gary? No, they, like, they praise Rashawn Gary a lot. I think I think a lot of them. I think Rashawn Gary used to get killed because it's PFF. PFF was used to kill him. That's the only reason people were down at him because people listen to PFF with the draft and all they do is miss. So I don't know if people even listen to that when it comes to the draft. But that's just a, that's a different thing. Like they they had Mason Rudolph as a first round pick. So like why are we even talking about that? But that's the reason why people are down on Rashawn Gary. But yeah. the NFL wasn't down on Rashawn Gary. But I mean, he I think he actually might start this year. Because so I don't think they are as high on Preston Smith or if he's even still there. And I think Gary had that chance to develop behind Preston Smith. And I think he's ready to go now. So I think because he, he had he took a he took a jump last year. Like he took a jump. So but I mean, Rashad Gary is an athletic freak, though. So he's like, <laughs> what do you? I asked him, stupid. Oh my God, he, he wasn't good. In, he worked on his production in college. Like, well, maybe if you, if he, if you he, he's a freak with a motor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are, we, what are we talking about here? It's so stupid. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, anyway. I mean, yeah. So I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, 
I, I see all the Cleveland for all slander. I understand, you know, but at the same time, like, this is not Cleveland Farrell's fault where he got picked. So let's, I don't know. If Raider Nation probably can't relax about it, they're going to always be upset about it, yeah. you know. Um, but and, but we'll see how he performs this year, you know, and what kind of role he carves out for himself. Yeah. Um, and, and you, you're you only as good as your depth, you know, so – Max Crosby, Yannick Ngakwe go down. One of those guys goes down. You know, that's Clint Furl. He's yeah. He's got to step in. So it's not like, you know, it's not like he's not going to play ever. You know, he's going to play. But um, people like people like to see the starting, right? Yeah. Like on the depth they, chart. They want to see the top five pick. They want to see the top five pick be a superstar. Yeah. That's, it. that's yeah, what he's supposed that's to be. It. supposed to that's be a superstar. It. And he's not, so they're pissed. He, he, that's, that's, that's what it is. He, he's not a superstar, so they're pissed. So let me ask you this. If they say they picked um, Josh Allen, uh-huh. okay, instead, uh-huh. would they have picked, Would do you think, I, 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 know, I know my answer. Do you think they would have picked Max Crosby in, in the fifth round if they got someone like Josh Allen in the first round? No. I, I mean, if, if you're like, who should they have taken at five, at four, it'd probably be Devin White. I mean, if you're going to be for doing that, that's probably who they should have took. But I didn't want Devin White then either. So, like, you know. I like Devin White and I like Devin Bush. I like both the Devins, okay? Devin White makes some fun plays, okay? Yeah. Coming forward. Like, Denzel Perryman is a poorer man's Devin White. Devin White, like, he doesn't cover anyone. Like, <laughs> the fans the fans see him make a big sack and, like, pop someone's helmet off. Or like run to the side, like run all the way on the outside zone and like make a tackle at the line of scrimmage or something like that. Okay. And they're yeah. like, this guy's a top five linebacker or something like that. Blow like, up a screen. The, the, the NFL executives voted him number one. So is that the fans? No, 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 no. People who watch film, like they're like, Devin White is not as good as you guys think. <laughs> it was He's NFL ex- the, the coaches, bro. Hyped. And the players. He said he was <laughs> the number one linebacker in the league, bro. No, 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 no. Oh, you're talking about he made that. big plays. He had, he had a big, he had a big playoff run. He did. He had a good playoff run. Yeah, uh, Levante David's a better linebacker than him, and I'm not. I'm not hating. I'm. I'm not hating. Well, that's not hating like, at all. That's called just. That's just actually being smart. He's probably the most underrated player in the NFL, Levante David. So. One. One of them for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, but yeah, like Devin White brings a lot of juice. You know, like there's a lot of juice there, and that yeah. that'd be that'd be fun to watch. Yeah. But you know, if De- if if Devin White was in Paul Gunther's defense. Paul Gunther would have figured out a way to make him look like trash. Okay, guarantee. Yeah, PFF would be killing him. Be, killing he's him. like a he's like a forty five grade. If PFF is like real quiet about it, they don't like they don't like talk around about him. But he's like a forty five grade from them. And if he had a forty five grade in the Raiders, he'd be here all the time. Yeah, how it'd be, it'd be worse. It it'd be worse. <laughs> and we all be mad about Devin White. So right, you know, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't think that. Uh, I don't think many players could have played well under Paul Gunther. So now there's a scheme change. Let's let's just see what what the current guys are yeah. before we start judging them and being upset about their draft uh, mm-hmm. capital. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Anything else that you want to talk about? Oh man, I'm good, bro. Hey, hey nothing else. I'm good. Dog. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Raider nation, we appreciate you for tuning in. If you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes, make sure you hit the download button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube as well. Follow myself at BD Williams 18 on Twitter. Follow my co-host Marcus Johnson at the Mark John NFL. Make sure you ch- uh, tune in where will um we'll put out an announcement on twitter how we're handling the post game um podcast so stay tuned for that we we're going to see if we can make it a live reaction but we'll see we'll see if uh marcus is you know uh, in the right state of mind this time around <laughs> I, I, I will it through guys i will it through I, you know i woke up you know saying i woke up sunday morning and I, yeah I, I yeah <laughs> I still gave you guys that uh, the uh, couple instant reaction that I probably didn't remember, but I did try to give it what I remembered the most. <laughs> oh, and um, la- last thing, last thing. A lot of people keep on saying what happened to the old intro music. So, Marcus, do you want to explain what happened? Uh, yeah, so I bought that beat off Beat Stars like a long time ago. I just like bought it for like at least uh, like 20 bucks. And I guess the dude sold it to somebody. So good for him i don't know but they flagged us. yeah now we're getting copyright flags because of the intro music 
we've never gotten a flag before for that for that song we settled yeah. on that one usually all our cop uh, all our copyright flags are from brian baldinger okay like he does not want us to do this show the guy is a hater <laughs> okay hate her big time <laughs> but um and so when i reviewed the copyright flag i'm like wait for the for the intro music so i hit up marcus because he's the one who gave it who you know provided this and so um so yes we're in the we're hunting we understand that this is not everyone's cup of like favorite uh intro music it sounds a lot different uh we're, we'll st- we'll still we're still trying to settle on new mm-hmm. intro music so stay tuned for that you know when when we get it up it, that'll probably be our beat for a while so yes yeah. so, so if you hear like Biddy the butcher or something over that beat you, you guys know where you heard it first you guys know where you heard it first. <laughs> there you go all right ready nation peace out peace Much out love <laughs>